Well, here we are. Just two podcast hosts talking about the Nashville Predators and penalties. Played a big part in the game last night where the Preds lost 4-3 to the LA Kings. Let's talk about that game tonight on the Locked on Predators podcast. Your Locked on Predators, your daily podcast on the Nashville Predators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Predators your first listen of the day, every single day. I'm Nick Morgan. I'm a writer and editor at OnTheForeCheck.com, and I have a partner in crime. You do. I am Ann Kimmel. I'm a writer and editor at InsideThePreds.com. And together we form your free daily Nashville Predators podcast. We are available five days a week wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. So if you're listening, be sure to hit the subscribe button and help us out. Well, Nashville Predators played the Los Angeles Kings last night in a game that I think is going to be frustrating for a lot of of different reasons uh the preds uh were up three to one most of the way through the third period and then a back-to-back goals by matt roy of all people tied up the game uh and then we had a shootout in which gabe velarde scored the only goal forsberg duchene yossi couldn't get anything past cal peterson Preds get a point, but lose 4-3 in the shootout. And mm. one word to describe this game. Okay, so my one word is actually a scenario. So this is, let me set the stage for you for what my, how this game felt as somebody who was there. So imagine, if you will, you get a phone call from a friend that you loved in high school great friends, but you've just lost touch and they invite you to dinner and you're so excited. You love this friend. You can't wait to reconnect with this friend. You get to their house. They have this amazing spread of food. They seem excited to see you. The conversation gets going. You're like, this is so wonderful. And then all of a sudden, wham, they pull out a whiteboard and they start trying to get you to join their pyramid scheme. That was the game last night. Has this happened to you? Oh my gosh, I at least three times, first of all, at least three times. Uh, you need better friends. You're not wrong. Um, yeah, we got Amwayed. Like Nashville Predators fans got Amwayed last night. Like we were brought into this game, we were sucked into this game, we were having a great time, the conversation was flowing, we were feeling good about it, and then wham, we got Amwayed. That is my one word for this game. We just the Predators am way does. It was terrible. I thought you were going to go like the, what, what's the makeup? The Mary Kay? Mary Kay, yeah. Mary Kay. You could, I thought about Lou LaRoe. Like we got legginged, you know, we got leggings yeah. with holes in them. Like, yeah. Pick your beauty product, your essential oil, your household goods, yeah. any, and, and that, and make it a verb. And that's my one word for this game. Yeah, I, I can't get over the fact that it's happened to you three. Has that times. never happened to you? No, really. That's the benefit of only like talking to one of your high school friends. Yeah, at the age of thirty. <laughs> uh, my best friend uh, Drew, who actually listens to this a bunch, so hey, shout buddy, out doing? to Drew. Like a, yeah. glad that you're friends with my good friend Nick. B, thank you for not trying to rope him into your pyramid scheme. Yeah. Um, my one word, Anne, is Groundhog Day, because oh. I feel like I'm up here like Bill Murray right now. I've got the whatever attitude. I'm just holding a mic in the middle of a cold day and just being like, well, it's Groundhog Day again. To this time, it's, well, Preds committed eight penalties again. Actually, nine penalties. Uh, nine. Yeah. You know, the Kings had eight power play opportunities. So, I mean, here's here's the thing, Anne. Yep. It's the same thing, like, at least once a week since 
when like last december you would say was when this problem really started going under the microscope we've talked about the preds many times being the most penalized team in the nhl um the weird okay so the weird thing is that they only gave up one uh, power play goal last night uh, which was the first one so i guess like you could say like at least in terms of the power play it didn't affect the game but Here's the issue with that logic. When you're shorthanded, you can't get into your flow. You know, you yes. can't set up five on five opportunities. You can't, you know, get the possibility of maybe drawing a penalty or maybe going up and having a lengthy power play if you're shorthanded, if you're chasing. When you're shorthanded, you're basically letting the other team kind of dictate the flow of the game for two minutes. They have the extra man, they set up in the zone. They can control that puck for as long as they want. And those are the things that hurt more than let's, let's say like, you know, if the Kings scored like two shorthanded or two power play goals on the short or the power play opportunities they had late in the game, it would be like obvious that'd be like, this definitely costs the Preds a game. Right. This way, I think it's a little more subtle because if you watched five on five, I thought overall, the Preds played a really good game, a very much improved game from mm-hmm. Dallas, but it was so choppy because they could not set up anything on their own. Like they couldn't get their own momentum going. They were allowing LA to dictate. Like there would be like this little like two, three minute push where the Preds were just buzzing around the net. And so you're like, oh, you feel a goal coming. Like they're they're playing so well right now. They got momentum and then poop, a Jeremy Lazan dumb cross check. So they survive and they're still up three, one. And it's like, okay, we got this like Preds. We were buzzing. We killed off the power play. We got momentum. And then boop, Cole Smith, a not very good hockey play that led to an interference call. We survive it. It's like, okay, woo. Okay. The Kings just scored. It's three, two. Uh, But look, Oh, we responded after that goal really, really well. It's we're buzzing. Oh, look, we just got a power play. Uh, look, this is our opportunity. We can control play. We can force the play. And Matt Duchesne took the what made him look like a angry 20-year-old. Mm-hmm. That type of penalty that absolutely killed the power play. And guess what happened on that four-on-four? Four? Tie game. The LA Kings scored the game tying goal uh, because of the lot of extra space given in the crease or in the yep. slot because of the having a man down. It's just like, and do you see what I'm talking about? Where it's just like, you can't get into your flow. Yes. Because of yeah. that penalties. That was what disrupted the game more than, you know, allowing a shorthanded goal. And to build off what you're saying, you know, you look at this and you think they take a penalty. Okay. They're playing two men, you know, two minutes down, you know, um, with, you know, they've got two minutes with one man down. I didn't get to bed till real late last night. So it took me a minute to put that together. But you know what I'm saying? Like two minutes, everybody in Bridgestone Arena, including the players are watching those two minutes click down. And you think if we can just survive these two minutes and they did that a lot. The problem is that a penalty, the the repercussions of those penalties doesn't end when the guitar riff plays and the penalty box door opens because now you have to dig out of the momentum that the other team built. And even when Nashville killed off a boatload of penalties last night, and like you said, they did kill off a boatload of penalties, it absolutely destroys their momentum. We saw it with San Jose in Prague. San Jose would get a power play, and whether they scored on the power play or not, they continued to have possession. They continued to drive play well past the time the two minutes are up. So when you look at you know the Nashville Predators and you say, oh my gosh, they had this many minutes in the penalty box, that's not even the number of minutes those penalties affected the game. And you are giving away time. You are giving away minutes of this game that the Nashville Predators should have had and could have controlled. It's maddening. Yeah, they had to dig themselves out of a hole. And like you said, you kind of have to dig yourselves and get momentum back. Yes. Uh, every time after a kill. Like, yeah. 
Like next time they commit a penalty, watch the clock. Don't watch the two minute countdown. Watch the clock and watch the game and see, okay, how many minutes does it really take off of the Nashville's game when they commit a penalty? Because I guarantee you, it's a lot more than 120 seconds. It's yeah. wasteful. Uh, John Hines said something about this last night, and I have something to say kind of about John Hines' role in all this. Uh, I've been told Anne disagrees with my sentiment. Um, so we're going to listen to what John Hines has to say and have a little debate about that and where the Preds go from here. It's coming up in just a second, but first want to mention today's show brought to you by our friends at Bet Online. BetOnline.net is your number one source for your football betting information this season. NFL and college in full swing. Tennessee is now a top five team and finally – uh, has the 15-year jinx of Alabama lifted off their shoulders? Can they make a run to the SEC title game? Well, one thing you can do is check out betonline.net to find all the player developments, team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. So if you want to put a little money on the vaults, you know exactly the resources you need to have. And as always, Bet Online remains your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, live betting, up to the minute scores, odds, lines, prop bets, all that good stuff. It's also the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events. MLB playoffs in full swing, MMA, boxing, golf, NBA starting up, and of course, the NHL. So head to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. Bet online where the game starts. All right, and so John Hines uh, was asked about the penalty situation after the game last night. Um, a little bit of a saucy response. Let's let's get it. straight to it. Yeah, I'm pretty, uh, pretty frustrating, I, I, I imagine, especially with the lead there in the, in the last few minutes. Yeah, you know, we've got to be more, I mean, we'll, we'll be taking nine penalties tonight, and uh, six of the nine were in the offensive zone or the neutral zone, uh, undisciplined stick penalties. Um, you know that's not that's not, not going to put you in position to be able to to be able to have success. So that's the first area we've got to address. Did you like your team's competitiveness? I know that was a big issue with Dallas. Yeah, I mean tonight tonight it wasn't competitiveness. Tonight was smarts. You know we uh, starts with the penalties. Um, you know offensive zone penalties, penalties on the power play, penalties at key times. Um, you know you can't get any momentum when you do that, and you're putting their their top guys on the ice. Uh, I thought in the third period our decision making with the puck um, didn't set us up to be able to play in the attack, and we had to take on a lot of water. So for me tonight, it was just you know our attention to detail, the di the uh, discipline to details, um, you know those things those things have to improve. Okay, what do you make of that, Ann? Uh, I think it's a really fair assessment. I like you know. I like what he said, you know, I don't like it, but I agree with what he says tonight. You know, last night's game was not about competitive uh, competitiveness. It was about smarts. Mm -hmm. it, it, you know, that's just what it was. Those were dumb penalties. There were very few of these penalties that, that are excusable and it's dumb. Yeah. This was the most, and you know, it wasn't even, he was that fired up about, but this was the most like, damning thing I've seen John Hines say about the Preds penalty situations. And I think therein lies the problem because we talked about this uh, on a few shows last season when he was asked when the Predators started taking a lot of penalties, you know, he kind of, from our point of view, sort of brushed them off a little bit and like, yeah, you know, you kind of have to be careful, but at the same time he made sure he's like, you know, we like our guys to play on the edge. We like our guys to be aggressive. You know, we don't want to change the way we play. We just have to be, you know, make sure we're a little on the line and nothing changed. In fact, it kind of seemed like the, the matter got worse throughout last season. It seemed like the Preds were routinely taking five, six, seven penalties a game. And uh, look, I do think you have to put some responsibility on John Hines for that. Now, I, I know you're, you disagree. Like I, I, I know you, you've told me beforehand and I'm going <laughs> to let you kind of go block it. But I, I think if there is a routine problem on your team, a certain situation that always seems to keep dooming you, like we talked about at the top of the show, and that does, and that goes on for what's kind of been close to a calendar year now. 
and you don't get that fixed over the course of two seasons, what are you doing? Like, what's what's your role as coach in all this? Like, you gotta you gotta make it a point in practice or something like that. And this isn't like again, there's a difference between like a player is on like an odd man rush or something like that, and you know you you have to hook him to slow him down or stuff like that, or you know, hey, you're you're fighting for a loose puck and you know along the boards, and a player just kind of happens to take a stride and your stick and you fall over. We're not talking about that. We're talking about like the Cole Smith cross check at the end of the first, where it's just like a dumb penalty. We're talking about Matt Duchesne's Matt Duchesne slash on a power play in the offensive zone. That is dumb. We're talking mm-hmm. about the Jeremy Lazan cross check, which is almost a carbon copy of the Cole Smith penalty earlier. That was dumb. There are so many of these, and it feels like every game, and the fact that this doesn't seem to be getting fixed, the fact that it's kind of the same people, you know, every single time we talk about this, and the fact that now even, like, some of the team stars are starting to fall uh, sort of into this trap, I, I do think John Hines has to step up and claim some responsibility for this. I disagree. <laughs> so let me ask you a couple questions. Number one, do you think that John Hines has been dismissive of penalties? Do you really believe that in practice, John Hines is like, meh? I don't believe it. Like, I believe that's something he brings up, but that's mm-hmm. not matching his tone in the press conferences. And look, here's but here, but here's the thing, Anne. What... What do you think gives you more accountability? If somebody pulls you to the side, you know, if your boss pulls you to the side and it's like, hey, you know, we really like want you to do this or something like that. And you're like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Let's say, you know what a good example of this is? Uh, You want, do you watch The Office? Oh gosh, yes. I'm sorry, I do. (laughs) Do you remember the episode where nobody believed Jim was in charge? Yes. And Ryan kept telling him like, oh yeah, you know, I'll do this in a second. And Jim's like, Hey man, uh, can you like do this like spreadsheet? And Ryan's like, yeah, we'll wait and see if he's back. It's like, no, can you do it now? And then like every time, like, you know, you, he went to check on Ryan, he wasn't doing it and he was kind of making excuses and he was telling the people, yeah, Jim doesn't really have enough power. Um, how did that episode end? Jim went up to the front of the new, the front of the office said, Hey everybody, can I have your attention? pulled Ryan out, moved his office to the, to the broom closet. And what did Ryan do? He's like, I'm so sorry, man. I can do those right now. And Jim's like, yeah, I bet you will. And shut the door. And guess what? Nobody doubted Jim had power after that. I understand what you're saying. Loved that episode. But my frustration comes with the fact that that the assumption, because it keeps happening, the assumption is that John Hines is not addressing it. And I think that that is not a correct assumption. I do think John Hines is addressing this. I do think that, I don't think John Hines thinks this is okay. I don't think he thinks this is not a problem. I don't think any of the players think this is not a problem. My frustration comes when people blame John Hines because here's the deal, it's execution. Mm-hmm. You can't tell me that Matt Duchesne, and, and again, love Matthew Duchesne, but you can't tell me that Matt Duchesne doesn't know better yeah. than to, to commit a lazy penalty. And that was the problem last night. Last night was not about, I didn't know, or it was about lazy. It was about I'm behind and I can't fix it. And some of that, I think most of that is on the players. Well, you know, to me, I compare it, you know, right or wrong. I compare it from kind of my experience as a parent. I will teach my child. Look, I have been up my children's sphincters about a lot of things. You know, like I tell them how it is. I tell them, look, this is the consequence. You do this, this is what's going to happen. This is why you do what you do. I cannot go out and go to high school with my 18-year-old and execute good decisions for him. I don't think this is a case of John Hines is laissez-faire about penalties. I don't think this is a case of John Hines is not addressing penalties in practice. I think this is a case of the Nashville Predators 
are not playing to their ability. I don't know if they still have cement in their skates. I don't know if maybe they came into this season not as conditioned as they need to be. And it was a problem last season as well. Obviously, eventually the buck stops with John Hines. But if we're talking practically speaking, I think it's ridiculous to assume that John Hines is okay with this. I think it's off the wall to assume that John Hines hasn't addressed this. It's, and it's on the players. It's me, on the players. Let me jump in and clarify a few things here. Mm -hmm. No means am I absolving the players in any of this. Sure. Like I said, Matt Duchesne, stupid. Jeremy Dumb. Lazon, stupid. Dumb. Cole Smith, stupid. Like, I think I've made that pretty clear. I'm saying, what is John Hines's role? What What do does you think not, he needs to not, do? Does that not tell you that, you know, does that not tell you, though, that maybe the players aren't getting his message? And isn't that a problem? I don't see any way that the players don't get the message. This is not, well, we're not talking well, comic well, sections. And, and look at the game last night. They I don't disagree with message. you execution does not equal understanding do you know what i'm saying yeah. like i don't think there is any i don't think there is any ambiguity and expectation from john hines about penalties i don't think there is any ambiguity in uh what needs to happen with the players it's an execution issue i don't think this is john hines isn't addressing it i don't think this is uh, nobody like they don't know it's an execution issue and at some point these professional hockey players have to execute better do you I mean like uh, after the game in the post-game press conference Cody Glass was asked about the penalties and, and I'm not going to get the quote right but he was saying you know instead of reaching with your stick sometimes you just got to take three hard skates and I'm like y'all the 21 year old knows this, like, yeah. you know, I don't think that this, there is an ambiguity issue from coach to player. I will say this. The one thing that I will agree with when it comes to John Hines is I'm at a point where even last night in the shootout after these penalties, I looked at my husband and I said, and again, I love Matthew Duchesne, but I looked at my husband and I said, after that penalty, Duchesne should not be in the shootout. You brought up kind of an interesting thing, like because you asked this before. What else is John Hines supposed to do about it? Mm -hmm. Send a statement. Yeah. Well, like, and after last, yeah. Bench Matt Duchesne. Bench Jeremy Lazan. Cole Smith yes. had two penalties. Bench Cole Smith. Mm -hmm. Make send a message that you know. Say what you will about a coach like you know John Tortorella or something like that. That, that rubs players the wrong way. Or say what you will about Barry Trotz. Remember, Barry Trotz was kind of notorious for this, almost maybe a little too notorious when it came to some younger players of not giving a leash. But look, if you're doing the same mistake again and again, if you're not getting the message week after week, then do something. Like pull one of your players out and it's like, you know what? If you're going to play undisciplined, we don't trust you to be out there. Mm-hmm. And look now, now Cole Smith is different than Matt Duchesne. You know, do you really want to bench one of your best players in, in a shootout? But you know, it, it's got to be something along those lines. You know, if you're doing this routine, and you know what, that's the second game in a row. Remember, Matt Duchesne had that abuse of an official penalty. Oh my goodness, he went this, off. This, that's the second game in a row where Matt Duchesne has lost his head. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Some, something's got to change. And, and look, I know, I know I get what you're saying. I understand what you're saying. And I don't disagree at all. Mm -hmm. that The bulk of this is on the players. Right. I'm saying John Hines has to do something more than he's done so far, because if we get into November, December, and down the stretch run of the season, and this is still hurting the Nashville Predators, that's a coaching failure. I think something needs to change. I agree with that. All right. Uh, let's talk yeah. about the rest of the game in a second, uh, yeah. in, in just a little bit.
Yeah, there, and there are a couple of good things that we should definitely touch on. But first, want to thank you for making Locked on Predators your first listen today. When we are done here, you need to go make your second listen game to game NHL. This is every moment, every top performance, every result from the league ready for you. Uh, Locked on game to game covers every game across the NHL. It has local analysis from locked on experts that only locked on can deliver. You can follow game to game on locked on NHL. It's available anywhere you get your favorite podcasts and you can also check it out on YouTube. All right, and what are a few uh, non penalty things that stood out to you from the game last night? <laughs> There were just a couple of those. Yeah. So I think that there were a couple of good things that that we do need to just kind of touch on. Um, first of all, Cody Glass. Uh, Cody Glass got his first goal as a Nashville Predator uh, on a delayed penalty. And while I can't even begin to tell you how thrilled I am to see Cody Glass score, and it was an incredible shot. I will say this. It looked very Philip Forsberg. It took my husband a minute to put together. Wait a minute. That was eight and not nine because yeah. it was just amazing shot. Um, I want to highlight the reason that play happened was Mikhail freaking Granlund. Can we just talk about Mikhail Granlund for a minute? He, I, I will say this. He is the player that I think has the best on ice vision of anyone on the Nashville Predators team. And I think he is top in the league as well for being able to anticipate and find what is unfolding in front of him. So, you know, Cody Glass loved seeing him get a goal. Um, I think everybody wants to see him succeed and, and he's doing all the things that he needs to do for that. But Mikhail Granlund, come on. He is just, he is really something special. He is something special. And he made that play uh, to set up the Preds' second goal too. That great yes. cross ice pass uh, on Philip Forsberg's goal. To yes. set up. And yeah, um, I, I would say that, yeah, Mikhail Granlund, I think, was the Preds' MVP last night. Bar yes. None. Um, yes. Maybe, maybe UC Saros, too, uh, because UC made a couple of really good saves Gosh, yes. uh, to keep this Preds close again. And remember, we talked about that yesterday. We were like, UC Saros kind of seems like he was getting out to a slow start. I know people are going to look at the 4-3 score and think, huh, um, yeah, kind of rough. But um, first goal, like, just a really good deflection by Arthur Yeah. Now. Like exactly the exact play that you needed to run in the exact like location it happened. Like if that's, if that play is like 1% off uh, that goal doesn't happen. Like right. so credit to the Kings for that, um, you know, third goal, maybe, although that was a tough shot coming down the slot like that second goal uh, that was just kind of a fluke bounce off Matias Ekholm, who, you know, I think a lot of people Less. blamed him for that goal, but, uh, I actually thought he was making a good defensive play, uh, just sort of an unlucky bounce. Um, yeah, but the rest of the game, like other than other than those plays, UC Saros was was fine. In fact, he yes. stepped up and made a couple of really good key saves down the stretch. So that was something yes. to me that was encouraging, is to kind of see the old UC Saros back. I think he's trending in the right direction. Yes. No, I would agree. I think we saw some vintage sorrows um, and, and just really incredible saves. Uh, Tanner Janot, shout out to Tanner Janot. He got his first goal of the season, which was really great. But again, you you know, Tanner Janot gets credit for that goal and he showed us a beautiful wraparound goal with less than a minute to go. So we're finally on the right side of those end of the period scoring chances. But uh, again, the play before the goal, Colton Sissons uh, up against the boards, tenacious play after the puck, getting that puck and getting it to Janot. So there are things happening before these goals that are that are good that that we want to see more of from the Predators. So there were glimpses of some some really good things. Yeah, the maybe the best game of the herd line so far this season. Yes. Uh, by far, yeah. it's, it's funny because there's a lot of people uh, making a lot of, of talk about maybe the herd line isn't having quite the same impact this year as it did last year. Uh, there's talk about maybe switching up lines a little bit, um, you know, maybe get some fresh faces on there, maybe move some of those guys somewhere else. But I thought last night, um, especially in the second and third period, I thought those three guys played really well together. Yes. Their best game of the year. Um, like I said, I, I – 
I don't think the time for like rash lineup decisions is quite yet. Mm-hmm. Maybe Cole Smith. Um, but yeah, I, I, I would say there is a lot of encouraging things and maybe that's, maybe that's the overall wrap up. We should take this game now at that. We've had our penalty venting session. <laughs> um. I do think that the Preds showed a lot of promise last night and it's a shame they didn't get the win. Uh, But, you know, for all the talk about once you take out, you know, the penalty situation and once you take out, um, you know, the, the, what we talked about earlier with the Kings power plays kind of disrupting chances. There was a lot to like from the Nashville Predators last night. A lot to like. Yeah. They certainly played better than they did uh, in the two games that against Dallas. I would say even they played better than they did that second game of the Prague series. So I think in terms of the play on the ice, now there's a couple of hiccups in there, there, but overall, the play on the ice, I think you have to be encouraged and think, okay, maybe the Preds are back in the right direction here. Yes, I would agree with that. There were definite large pockets of identity hockey where the the predators controlled things and were executing well. So if we can eliminate some of the things that we've talked about, I think the predators are have the potential to head in the right direction. I would agree. They're, you know, as frustrating as aspects of this game were, there were definitely some good takeaways for the predators heading in the right direction. Maybe slower than we need them to, but Heading in the getting, right direction. They're getting there. Well, uh, tomorrow they will play the Columbus Blue Jackets. Good old Ohio team. Uh, who They got their first win uh, last yeah. night. Johnny Hockey season is finally uh, kicking up in central Ohio. Uh, Preds will be on the road for that one. We will have a preview of that game tomorrow on the Lockdown Predators podcast. And until then, where can the people find your work? You can find my work at insidethepreds.com and you can find me on Twitter at ANK underscore Mama on Ice. And I'm Nick Morgan. You can find me at ontheforecheck.com. Follow me at underscore NS Morgan. Uh, for those of you listening, uh, whatever platform you're using, Apple, Spotify, um, Stitcher, Audacity, Odyssey, whatever, you subscribe. Just hit that subscribe button. That way uh, you'll always know when we have a new episode. And that helps us out. Uh, Same thing on YouTube. If you're watching us on YouTube, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification. Uh, Your support really helps us. That's going to do it for today's Locked on Predators podcast. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day. We'll be back tomorrow with an all-new episode. We'll see you then.